And we're live. Hi, right. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to hear from you again. Hello, hello. Okay. Um, I apologize <laughs> for the one minute delay. <laughs> but hello, hello, hello. I'm so happy that you are here, everyone. And I hope you will stay. <laughs> I hope you will stay and finish this. <laughs> finish our lovely webinar together okay so everyone i want to ask you how are you i want to know how you are guys because um, everyone because i know it's a little bit crazy um nowadays we are facing you know quite some difficult situations here and there but i'm sure we will overcome this i'm sure we will face this together okay i hope you are all fine everyone <laughs> i hope you are all well and um yeah we can do it <laughs> okay so everyone before i start my webinar i would just like to remind you of two things okay so the first thing is, if you have any questions or if you need clarifications about anything, please send them in the live comment section or in the live chat box, okay, so that I can read them and then I can help you answer these questions, okay? And second thing, everyone, I really love interaction, okay? <laughs> Again, I know that you are <laughs> I know that you are watching this webinar and I know that you are supposed to listen. But please, please, please everyone, if you are um, you know, if we have any activities in this webinar, please answer them by typing in the chat box, okay? And I would love, I would definitely love to hear your answers, okay? So everyone say hello, okay? So I have, a, uh, I have some students who have already said hello. So thank you so much for that. So I just want to say hello to Francesca, to Gabriela, Miyuki, to Matteo, to Lucy, to Matteo again, um, to Francesco, to Marina, and to Elisa, to Daniela as well. Hello, Daniela. <laughs> right, we are. We have a lot of students coming from all over the cities in Italy, and I'm so happy about that. We also have Robbie. Hi, Robbie. <laughs> all right. So everyone, those are the two things that I want you to remember. Are we ready for this webinar, okay? <laughs> I hope we're ready, okay, everyone? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew, and I am from, I'm an, I'm an English teacher from Milano, Fabio Pilzi. And in this afternoon, I'm going to be your English teacher slash webinar teacher for this focus activity, okay? So just a quick reminder, this is a focus activity for levels 8 to 10, okay? So let's start this together, everyone. Here we go. So it's such an interesting focus activity, everyone. Let's read this together. Focus activity 8 to 10, history of food, okay? So everyone, just by looking at the title, what comes to your mind when you hear or when you read the words history of food? What do you immediately think when you hear about history of food? Do you think about the culture of a country? Do you think about the specialty of the country? What do you think about when you hear the word his or when you hear the um, phrase history of food? This is such an exciting focus, everyone, and I want to hear your opinions about this, okay? So let's have a look at this. So let's read this together. History of food. In this focus activity, all right, food quiz, passives, and famous food origins, okay? 
So everyone, in this particular focus activity, we are going to review the passives, okay? This is such an exciting lesson, everyone, because we are going to use food, all right, as an example to create sentences using passives, all right? And I hope you will participate in this one, okay? Please, please, please participate in this activity, okay? So Matteo wrote an answer and he said, whenever he thinks of the, of the phrase history of food, he immediately thinks about carbonara. <laughs> That's amazing. Matteo, you know what? Um, I had never tried carbonara before, okay? Be okay, let me explain. I promise, I promise, I will explain. I promise, all right. Because when I first heard about carbonara, I thought it was um, like heavy cream with bacon. That's my kind of carbonara because, <laughs> and I'm really, really sorry about that, okay? I thought the carbonara has, you know, um, panna da cucina and pancetta. I thought, I thought, okay, please, I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, but then my friends and I went out for dinner and they ordered carbonara and I was so surprised that the carbonara in Italy has <laughs> egg yolks. <laughs> Can you imagine my shock and surprise when I found out about that? Like, oh my goodness, everyone. That was just mind-blowing. All right. And then we have an answer from Francesco. He wrote that he thinks of pizza and orecchiette. <laughs> oh my God, I, wanna, I want to try orecchiette. You know, um, I think that's really, really nice. I always try, well... Pizza is, it's a plus point, but um, I would definitely love to try orecchiette. I haven't tried it yet, unfortunately. Francesca wrote Italian food. That's nice. I love it. And Lucy wrote that um, she's thinking that a country has an infinite history um, of food in this particular focus. So very good on this, Lucy, but I would prefer infinite with letter I and history with not plural, just singular. Okay, great. So everyone, let's try to do this activity. Here we go. But before we, but before we do the activity, okay, let's have a look at some of the questions here um, regarding history of food, okay? So Daniela asked me, <laughs> here we go. So Daniela asked me, okay, so Matthew, do you like carbonara? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, it was by far one of the best Italian food that I've ever tried. Carbonara, it's just delicious, Daniela. I loved it. And I love it to that. It was so good when I tried it. It was really, really nice. That was amazing. Everyone, remember, I'm a foreigner, okay? I'm a foreigner. And I would definitely love it if you can recommend or suggest, um, you know, typical Italian food. Of course, I know some Italian food. But maybe you know something that I don't. And if you do, I would love to hear your suggestions and recommendations, okay? So, yeah, I love it, Daniela. I don't like carbonara. I love it. It's amazing. Um, and then Gabriella wrote that she always thinks of Neapolitan pizza. Wait, please, in, please educate me on this. Enlighten me on this. The Neapolitan pizza is the um, tomatoes and um, mozzarella, right? The classic one. Am I correct? I think it's just that, right? If I'm not mistaken. Let me know if that's correct, all right? And then <laughs> Robbie wrote that, um, Matthew, have you ever tried pizza with pineapple? All right, Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. I live for the 
pizza with pineapple, okay? I live for that. <laughs> That's one of my favorites, okay? Because I just love pineapple on my pizza. I know you want to kill me, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know it's not your typical pizza, but it's what I really love. And I think that's just amazing. I love pizza with pineapple, and I'm sorry about that, everyone. Please forgive me. Okay. Um, Francesca asked me, if, do you know Arosticini, Matthew? Um, not that I know of. Of. Um, what is arosticini? Is this pork or chicken? I mean, I and from the word arosticino, it sounds like it's roasted. Am I right? But like roasted beef, roasted pork. What are the ingredients in this? What's in it? Oh, so Francesca wrote another thing, and she said arosticini is a typical di dish of um, Abruzzo. Really. Wow, I want to look it up. What is this? I want to, oh, it's sheep. Really? Oh my God, no, I haven't tried that yet, Franchi. Franchi, I'm a little scared. I mean, I don't eat sheep. <laughs> no, poor sheep. Um, But, oh, okay, so it's roasted sheep on a stick. Roasted sheep on a stick. Mm, Franchi, I haven't tried it yet. Mm, oh, so Marina said that it's a barbecue. It's a type of barbecue dish. Mm, that sounds great, but I'm I'm worried that it's sheep. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Daniela gave me a thumbs down for the pizza, for the pineapple pizza. Oh, my God. I can imagine, Daniela. I can imagine, but it's really, really nice. Okay, great. So everyone, I will get back to your um, to your answers, everyone. All right, I will get back to your answers. But now let's have a look at the slide and I want us to read this together, okay? And then we will talk about food. Everyone, we will talk about food for the whole hour, okay? Right, <laughs> right. So a unique dish. What are the most famous dishes from your region or country? Which is your favorite and what is it made from? Which type of food do you think is most well-known around the world? In your opinion, which country has the best, has the best food and why? Right, so everyone, I know that you might get a little bit opinionated in this one, do not worry about that. I love reading opinions. I love hearing opinions. So let's try to answer these questions together, okay? You can give me the particular number and your answer. Or if you want, um, we can answer this together, okay? So let's take a look at the first question, okay? So what are the most famous dishes from your region or country Everyone, just like what Franchi did, what Francesca did, can you tell me what is the most famous dish or dishes from your region, okay? So I want to know your food by region, okay? So we have arrosticini from Abruzzo. It's one of the famous dishes, okay? How about in other regions, okay? Right, so yesterday I had a student I had a student uh, from Rome, and because we were talking about, um, I went to Rome last January, and a friend of friend <laughs> try um, asked me asked me to try um, sal sambo salbotica. Oh my goodness, I forgot that. Please, sambo sambochi. No, oh my goodness. Wait, let me let me look that up. Some some salmonica alla romana, I think. Oh my goodness, please. Saltimbocca. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really really sorry. I forgot that. Um 
Saltin Boca La Romana. So I went to Rome last January and I tried Saltin Boca La Romana. Everyone, oh my goodness, that was delicious. Oh my God, that was absolutely delicious. I loved it. Oh my goodness, that was really amazing. So that, I know that Saltin Boca is in a Roman dish, right? And also carbonara, if I'm not mistaken. And then, um, so we have an answer from Lucy, and she wrote that um, in Lombardy, it's saffron risotto is typical, right? Um, I think they call it the, riso the risotto alla milanese, right? Um, or the risotto with saffron. And I think that's amazing. Matteo agreed to this, and he wrote that in Milan, I think rice with ossobuco. Ossobuco is a type, is it beef? I think it's beef, right? With the bone, with the bone of beef. I have tried um, risotto alla milanese, and it's absolutely um, amazing. However, I haven't tried it with ossobuco yet because, I, I don't know, I, I, I just want the risotto. <laughs> I'm not really into ossobuco, so I just want the risotto. Um, and then we have an answer from Francesco, and Francesco wrote that, Torcinelli in Foggia. Foggia or Foggia? Foggia, right? No, Foggia. <laughs> My Italian pronunciation is so bad. I'm so sorry about that. Right. So we have tor Torcinelli. Hmm, what is this? What is Torcinelli? Is, is this a type of pasta, Francesco? And then we have from Gabriella. She wrote, Campania region, we have pasta with ragu. I love it. That's really amazing. Um, and then Robbie wrote that pizza, genovese, lasagna, ragu, casatiello, etc. are some of the most famous dishes of my region. And definitely her favorite is pizza. Um, from which region, Robbie? Genovese. Hmm, so I'm guessing Genova. <laughs> I'm thinking it's Genova, right? Um, great. Okay. And then Francesco wrote a follow-up answer with, what is Torcinelli? No, Torcinelli is made the intestine of sheep. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> okay, I am very, okay, I'm willing to take risks, everyone, okay? I am willing to try all types of food, but I think it will um, take some time for me to warm up with um with the intestines of animals but i would love to try it one day um if you want <laughs> one day oh so robbie is from campania hi robbie hi robbie from campania hello oh so akobuk osobuko is a it's a cow's paw all right Oh, poor cow, <laughs> poor cow. All right. Um, so I have a question here from Francesca, and um, so Francesca brought up a question. Okay, it's kind of political, but um, I think we can just exchange ideas here. Okay, let's not turn this into a political argument. All right. So Francesca asked me, if, um, "What do I think about vegans?" Well. Um, in my opinion, I think you should fight what what you believe in. I really think that um, if you think it's right, then you should fight for it. However, I really don't believe in people who are extremists. So when you say people who are extremists, these are the people who exaggerate their beliefs okay so when you exaggerate your beliefs a lot of bad things happen so i really believe that you should fight for what you think is right but you should somewhat know your limitations you know respect as well the opinions of others try to enlighten them try to educate them instead of pushing your opinions towards that person 
All right. So this is just my opinion. And I'm sure you have different opinions in this. And I would love to hear that. Okay. Um, great. So I also have some answers here. Um, Miyuki. Right. So we have an answer from Miyuki. And Miyuki wrote that I'm from J Japan. So the most famous dishes are, <laughs> are Miyuki. Of course, sushi. Yeah. But my favorite is Odin. It's a type of potpourri hmm, made with fish balls and vegetables. Wow, that's really nice. Um, I think my favorite Japanese dish is um, okonomiyaki. I think it's the Japanese pancake. Oh my God, Miyuki, that was amazing. That was just delicious. The okonomiyaki, that was really nice. And um, we have another answer from Young Jin, and Young Jin wrote that bibimbap, uh, which is a Korean food, uh, which is Korean food rather, is a dish mixed with cooked white rice, various vegetables, beef, and red pepper paste. It is one of the most um, popular food in Korea or for Koreans. Okay, I absolutely agree with you, Young Jin. Everyone, have you tried the bibimbap? So bibimbap is a typical Korean dish with rice and, you know, as Young Jin said, vegetables and red pepper paste. Everyone, it's fantastic, Young Jin. I. I've tried this a lot of times and I, I always, always love it, especially with kimchi. This is absolutely amazing. This is nice. I love it. Um, oh, Elisa wrote an answer like, Intreviso, it's stewed tripe. Wow, that's, that's really nice. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to try it. Um, that's nice. All right. Um, and then. Francesca asked me, why is the topic about vegans quite political? Well, um, it can be quite political. It depends on your point of view, Francesca. There are some people who are really fighting for, um, for this particular issue. So I just want to say a short notice on this. Okay, um, and then Frenchie also asked me, another friend, she asked me, Matthew, tell us what do you hate about Italian dishes? Um, well, Frenchie, that's a very good question. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't hate anything about Italian dishes. Um, I'm, okay, I, I, I don't know how to answer this properly, really. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned because um, I know that the Italian food is full of carbohydrates. And <laughs> sometimes if I eat too much of it, you know, I get unhealthy at one point because of the blood pressure and stuff. But the Italian, but the Italian food is so good. So sometimes you eat a lot of it. And <laughs> maybe that's one thing that I don't like. It's like I keep eating a lot of it. But anything that's negative about Italian food, not really. I don't have anything against it right now. Um, and then Niccolo wrote that in my region, it's the Florentine steak made of Tuscan cows called Canina. This is Florence. I've heard about the Florentine steak and I want to try it. I have never tried it. And I want to try it, Niccolo. Um, hmm, Florentine steak. Is it expensive? Is Florentine steak expensive, everyone? I'm basically here in Milan. Um, is Do you know anything or do you know any restaurant that serves the Florentine steak here in Milan? If you do, let me know, okay? And um, now, everyone, let's get out of Italy for a while, okay? And I want to ask you, which type of food do you think is most well-known around the world? All right. So which type of food do you think is most well-known? In my opinion, I think it's the fast food, you know, um, fast food food, <laughs> kind of like burgers, pizza, fries. I think they're very popular all over the world. But I want to hear your thoughts on this one. Okay, so let me know your answers on the second one, okay? 
And of course, number three, I want to know your opinion on this. Which country has the best food and why? <laughs> mm, which country has the best food and why? So I cannot answer for this right now because I haven't traveled the world yet. But um, so far, I think the best food, um, I really think, okay, but this is just my opinion. I went to Vietnam and I think they have a very um, interesting take on dishes and I think they're kind of flavorful. So I would choose Vietnam for now or Thailand. I really like curry, everyone. <laughs> so I guess for me, it's Vietnam or Thailand. So that's really nice. So Mateo wrote that um, the well-known, the food that is well-known is actually hamburger, which is correct. I definitely agree with you, Mateo. And Miyuki wrote pizza. I agree with you, Miyuki. That's absolutely correct. And um, wait, so Niccolo wrote an answer to me. Usually Florentine steak costs 50 euros per kilo in a restaurant. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> wow. That's, that can be a lot if you eat a lot. But one kilo is a lot, you know. So that's not, that's not too much. So okay, that's really nice. Um, so I want to ask, sorry, I, um, we have an answer from Marina. And Marina wrote that originally uh, I'm from Belarus and draniki, a sort of potato pancakes, is the most typical dish. The main ingredients are grated potatoes and onions. They are usually served with sour and cream. This is fantastic. I've tried this, but um, in another, maybe in another restaurant or in another country, but more, more or less, they're the same, Marina. And I think it's really nice, especially with the sour cream. That's absolutely okay. Right. Um, Elisa wrote that, in my opinion, the best food is in Italy. I will not fight you on this one, Elisa. I absolutely agree with you. I think Italy has one of the best food. Absolutely. Um Pasquale wrote that Thai food is also nice. I love Thai food. <laughs> I really love Thai food, Pasquale, so much. I love it so much. Um, and then Niccolo answered that, in my opinion, the Italian food is the best, obviously, but I know that Indian food is the same as they have very tasty food. Instead, the best cook is in France. When you say cook, do you mean the chefs? The best chefs are in France. Um, I think this is the best chef, if I'm not mistaken. So Matteo wrote that it's too expensive. Which one is too expensive? The Fiorentine steak? I think if you think it's the Fior Florentine steak, then I agree with you, Matteo. I think it's kind of expensive for 50 euros. <laughs> but, you know, um, Robbie wrote that she has never tried it. Do you mean um, the Thai food and Vietnamese? If yes... Robbie, they are amazing, but I need you to, you know, to be really open to trying it first because um, I have some friends who, have, who haven't tried Thai food yet in the past, and once they tried it, they did not really like it. So I don't 100% recommend it. I only recommend it if you are interested in trying all types of dishes. So why not, Robbie? You can try it. Um, Miyuki wrote that Italy has the best food because um, it has a large variation when it comes to taste. And each region has their specialty. Each region has their own specialty. That's absolutely correct, Miyuki, and I definitely agree with you. Um, you know, we can actually try this next time to go to different cities and try their specialty. I would love that. 
Mateo is so nice. He wrote that I enjoy different kinds of food. I'm with you, Mateo. I'm with you. I definitely agree with you. And um, I love that. I also enjoy a lot of food, of different kinds of food. Right. So everyone, thank you so much for answering these questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now let's move on. Okay. And then we will still talk about the food. Okay, so we will skip this in a while, okay? We will go back to the previous slides because we need to focus on this first, okay? And I think uh, this will definitely be useful for you, okay? So everyone, we have here a story or a text, and I want us to read this together, okay? So I want us to read this together, and then later we will do the activity, all right? So, a staple food. Find the passives in the paragraph. What tense are they? Why are they passive? Pasta is eaten all over the world, but where was it first eaten? When most people think of pasta, it is immediately associated with Italy. But some would argue that pasta was in fact brought to Italy by Marco Polo in 1295 when he returned from China. Before that, it had been eaten by the Chinese as early as 3000 BC, but what the Chinese had created were actually rice noodles. They were similar to pasta, but were made using rice flour instead of wheat. Another popular theory is that pasta was introduced after Sicily had been invaded by the Arabs in 9th century AD. Wherever it came from, pasta has become a staple on tables around the world. Right. So everyone, before we answer this activity, let me first tell you the word staple. Are you familiar with this? So when you say staple, it is the most famous or the most popular dish, all right? Or the signature dish, as we call it. We also call it the signature dish. That's staple, okay? So, everyone, I promised you earlier that we are going to talk about the passives in this focus activity, and we're going to do it right now. Sorry. So now I want you to find all the passives in the paragraph and kindly type them in the chat box, okay? So I want you to participate in this one, okay? Type all the passives that you can find in the text in the chat box, okay? And as you type them, I will just give you some opinions about this one, okay? So that's really nice. Um, I didn't know that this is one of the histories of pasta or one of the background stories of pasta. But I think it's really, really, really nice, you know. I think I think it's quite okay that not really quite okay, but I think it's amazing that everyone keeps their history when it comes to food. I think history is very important. Okay. Great. So everyone, let's have a look at this. Some of you have already answered my question on the passives. So let's have a look at the first one, okay? So most of you answered pasta is eaten all over the world. Let's have a look at that together. Fantastic, everyone. So the, the first one is, is eaten, okay? How about the second one? How about the second one, everyone? So most of you answered pasta is immediately associated. Let's check. Um, I think. So the first is it was first eaten. Okay. Uh, only a few, few of you answered that, but it's definitely okay. And then the next one we have is immediately associated. So that's amazing. That's fantastic. Very good. Um, and then. How about the others? So we have was in fact brought and we also have was eaten. Let's take a look at this together. All right. So fantastic, everyone. So was in fact brought. 
Alright? How about the other one? Okay, so everyone, just a quick note. We still have something before your other answers. Okay, so was brought is correct. Okay, what else? So we still have quite a lot. Exactly, everyone. So we have had been eaten. Fantastic, everyone. Very good. So this is past perfect. Okay, very good, everyone. That's correct. Right. And then we have, so some of you answered. Uh-huh. So some of you answered this one, were made, which is correct. Very good. Very good, everyone. And of course, I think we still have two more. We still have two more, everyone. All right. Very good. Let me check. Let me just wait for some of the answers. So here we go. So Young Jin answered was introduced absolutely young gen so was introduced is also a um a passive form and last one everyone we still have last one lucy answered had been invaded as well as young gen let's check fantastic everyone very good good job all right great good job everyone very good i'm so happy about that very good Okay, so now everyone, let's talk about um, let's talk about the passives. Okay, so that was it. Um, Francesca wrote has become. All right, so Franchi unfortunately has become is not a passive because remember with the present perfect passive we need to add been has been plus past participle. Okay, so. Everyone, now, all right, so I promise I will go back to my screen. But before that, ta-da! Everyone, it's Matthew's magical notepad. <laughs> okay, it's Matthew, Matthew's magical notepad. So everyone, let's talk about the passives first, okay? I will quickly review the passives with you, and I want you to give me some examples using the passives, all right? So again, this is a um, quick review of passives, all right? So the first passive that we have is present or past simple passive, all right? So with the present and past simple passive, everyone, it's actually quite easy. You just need the subject plus to be plus as participle. Okay, so the verb to be that we have here should be is, are, was, and were. All right, so everyone, this is for the present and past simple passive and this is the shortcut everyone remember this when it comes to passive you only need one formula everyone this will save your life okay i promise you that you already know the passives i know i know but if you want to review them then this is your Bujardino, everyone. <laughs> I call it my Bujardino, everyone. Right. So subject plus verb to be plus past participle. Okay. So let me give you an example. So example. The pizza is eaten all over the world. All right. Fantastic, everyone. Very good. Good job. Okay, right. Now, can you give me some examples using present and past simple passives? Can you give me, please? All right. So I will wait for your answers, everyone. Type them in the live chat box, okay, below. Give me some examples using present and past 
simple passives, okay? And I will wait for you, okay? Great, everyone. I'm so happy about that. Okay. Let's have a look at that, okay? Great. So we have an example from Marina, and she wrote, a cake is made, a cake was made. <laughs> Fantastic, Marina. I love that. This is absolutely correct, okay? This is absolutely correct. But <laughs> if you want to create longer sentences, it's also okay for me, all right? But this is absolutely amazing. Very good, okay? All right. So here we go. We have... Um, Pizza is well known all over the world. So Robbie in this case, not in, okay, not in. So pizza is well known all over the world. This is nice, okay, very good. And then we also have this one from Mateo and she uh, he wrote, sorry, pasta was brought by Marco Polo. Fantastic, Mateo, absolutely amazing, great. Pizza was invented in Naples. Very good, Robbie. This is a very good example of past passive. And then we also have an example from Elisa. Fish and chips is eaten by English people or maybe other people too. <laughs> Fantastic. Very good. Good job. All right. Um, whoa. <laughs> Whoa, I did not write the cabbage, okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, fish, is, fish and cheap, uh, sorry, fish and chips is eaten by English, all right? This is a very good example of um, passive. Then we also have um, French, from Franchi, and she, <laughs> she used Marina's example. <laughs> all right, um, a cake was eaten by Marina, fantastic. Fantastic, Francesca. That's absolutely correct. Okay. And then Marina wrote, the Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Fantastic. Very good. This is a very good example of past passive. Okay. Um, and then we have Matteo. <laughs> Matteo. <laughs> Are you trying to tell something? <laughs> So Matteo wrote that carbonara is made without panna or panna is cream, okay? So carbonara is made without cream, right, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Fantastic, Matteo. This is a very good example of present, okay? Um, other teachers from higher levels, um, some of my colleagues wrote that cabbage is eaten all over the world. Fantastic, my lovely colleague. This is absolutely correct, okay? And I'm sure you <laughs> I'm sure you wrote it perfectly, okay? So cabbage is eaten all over the world. All right, fantastic. And then we also have an example from Miyuki. And Miyuki wrote that sushi are made by rice and fish. Mm. In this case, Miyuki, you can write it this way. Sushi is made with rice and fish. Okay? Fantastic, Miyuki. Very good. Here you go. And then we have, we have from Matteo, he wrote, Guinness was drunk by Matteo. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> That was, that was really, really nice. That was really, really nice, Matteo. Okay. All right. Okay. And then we also have another answer from Elisa. And Elisa wrote that Coca-Cola is produced in the USA. Fantastic example. I'm not sure if it's really produced in the USA, but very good example of the passive. Okay. I love it. Very good. Right. Francesca, we have an answer from Francesca, and she wrote, a luxury car is made by Ferrari. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. Very good. And then we have the answer from Lucy, and she wrote, that old house was built in 1890. Fantastic, Lucy. 
very good. And then a colleague of mine, <laughs> my colleague wrote <laughs> from the from another webinar, I think. <laughs> Cabbage is the most important food, and it will be eaten next week. This is a very good example of the future passive, everyone. This is really, really nice. So very good. I love it, my dear colleague, colleague who, wherever you are, I hope you are safe. <laughs> All right. Um, and then last uh, from Elisa, we have um, steak isn't eaten by vegetarians. Um, right. Absolutely, this is actually correct too. Very good use of the negative when it comes to passive, so fantastic on that. Um, all right, um, and then we have this. Here we go. We have an answer from Francesco, and Francesca wrote that hamburgers are eaten by American people. Fantastic use of passive. Francesco, but I'm not sure if only American people eat hamburgers. I'm sure that um, almost everyone eats hamburger nowadays. <laughs> okay, so everyone, good job, fantastic. Very good, very good use of, uh, very good examples using present and past simple passive, okay? So now, um, let's just go back to the, to the slides, okay? Do you have any questions about um, passives? <laughs> Francesco wrote only an example. <laughs> I'm sorry, Francesco. It's okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> All right. Do you have any questions about the passives, everyone? I'm sure it's quite easy for you since you got everything correctly. So good job on that, everyone. Now, here we go. So let's have a look at this, okay? And again, let's practice the passives together, all right? So I will read these examples to you. So memory tests, what can you remember about the history of pasta? Use the prompts to form questions and then ask your partners. Which country associated pasta? What food created the Chinese 3000 BC? Where pasta created, which part of Italy invaded Arabs 9th century AD, where pasta eaten today. Right. Everyone, can I ask you to transform these questions into passives? Okay. I want you to use all the passives that you know and kindly transform the questions into passives, okay? So I will wait for some of your answers, all right? So let's try with the first one. So Matteo wrote that pasta, or with pasta is associated to Italy, all right? So this is a good answer, but again, as a question. So you can write it as this way. Which country is associated? associated with pasta, all right? So this is the question form for that. And then the second one, we have what food created the Chinese 3000 BC? Huh? So in this case, we can use, what can we use here? All right, type your answers everyone in the live chat box, all right? So in here, we can also say what food was created, all right, by the Chinese in 3000 BC. And number three, let's have a look at the third one. So the third one is, fantastic everyone, With for those who answered what food was um was created by Chinese. Fantastic, everyone. Good job. And then for the third one, Robbie said, where was pasta created? So let's see. Fantastic, very good. So was pasta created? All right, so was first before pasta, okay? How about the fourth one? What do you think is the answer to number four? 
So Daniela Mateo Youngjin, good job on number three. Let's have a look at number four. So which part of Italy? Which part of Italy? Let's see. Fantastic, everyone. Very good. Which part of Italy was invaded by the Arabs in 9th century AD? And of course, the last one, everyone, is today. So it's... Huh? So the last one is, where is pasta eaten today? Fantastic, everyone. Very good. Good job. Good job, everyone. Good job. Good job. Right. So everyone, we answered this together and you all did an amazing job. Fantastic, everyone. I'm so happy about that. Now, do you have any questions about the passives? Any questions about the passives? None? Great. So everyone, once again, if um, the passives, you just need to put subject plus verb to be plus past participle. Okay? Right. So everyone, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time now to continue our webinar, okay? And I'm really, really sorry about that, okay? So if you have any questions, everyone, please send us a message and we will do our best to help you. You can also post your questions to our Facebook group, which is My English School SOS, all right? Or the SOS group in My English School. Um, and post your questions there and we will help you answer them to, and we will help each other to answer them, okay? And everyone, that's it. Unfortunately, this is the end of our webinar for this afternoon, okay? If you are interested to more webinars, I have another webinar after this at 5 p.m. for levels 6 to 7, okay? If you want, for levels 6 to 7, I know, I know. Okay, but for now, thank you so much, everyone. I want to thank you so much for joining this webinar with me. I really hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to hear from you again next time. Have a great evening, everyone. Matthew is signing out. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. You're very much welcome, Franchi. Lucy and Youngjin. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Frenchie. Bye, Marina. Thank you.